Great. So welcome everyone to our little cuppa and chat. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kerry Anderson, but I keep popping up everywhere. So um, you uh, probably do already know me and it's not um, uh, about me tonight. It's actually a, an important discussion because in the past few months, I know a lot of people have suddenly been embracing online retail sales. They might have been thinking about it for years and thought, yeah, I should have a go at that, but jumped in um, because of COVID, the restrictions, um, it's perhaps having the time to actually explore it, which is fantastic. And uh, so we thought it would be really useful to get a few people together that have experience in this area, probably made all the mistakes they don't want to talk about, but hey, it makes it more entertaining if you do, and, uh, and just get a conversation going. So I'm going to introduce Suzanne and Elise, who are conversation leaders this evening in a moment, but I just wanted to start with a few um, thought starters if I can get this slide to um, move. So these are the facts. Online sales are growing. Now I grabbed this lovely little slide from Obelo, so thank you very much to whoever they are, but I saw lots of versions and the line is just going up. So if you need to convince yourself online is important, just look at that almost vertical line of growth it is a fact, it's here to um, stay. Another important thing I wanna remind people about uh, when you do do an online platform is a lot of it is online on our smartphones and certainly the younger generation particularly. I, I still like my laptop, so you'll see me on my laptop, but you have to make sure that what you're doing is suited to a mobile platform when it's being viewed. So really important. That's a big stat, 75, almost 75%. We're going to talk um, mainly about Shopify, I think, unless someone else wants to jump in, but the top 10 e-commerce platforms. There's not just one, but obviously Shopify has got the numbers. Over a million businesses are using it across 175 countries. So, you know, it has the numbers. It obviously knows what it's doing. And Suzanne and Elise also uses Shopify, can talk a bit more about that afterwards. I'm a Squarespace gal, but my website is not so much about selling. So, you know, it's horses for courses. There's not just one. And uh, I just thought I'd throw that in. And the other thing that we'll touch on, obviously social media, you yeah, know, Facebook. Um, I've asked Elise to... Um, look into Facebook shops for us. So we'll find out what she has to uh, say about that. So that's just to get us thinking. But now I'd love to introduce Suzanne Carroll. Now her business is Cool Clutch from Gisborne. And I wrote this paragraph in my blog when I, I think last year I wrote this story about um, Suzanne. Ever dreamed of starting a business? Suzanne Carroll of Gisborne in Central Victoria woke up on the morning of 30th October 2015 and told her husband that she was going to start a business called Cool Clutch, selling cool by nature and cool by name handbags for women. And she did. It's a true story, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Suzanne. <laughs> I'm going to bring you in here. Welcome. Now, just tell us a bit, what do you sell and how do you sell it, Suzanne? Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for asking me to, uh, to be here. Um, I have a um, business called Cool Clutch. Yes, I did wake up one morning and decide that um, I wanted to create a handbag I could hide my wine in. Um, that was my... Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, that was my um, driver at the time. I thought, yes, I want, a, I want a handbag that I can put my wine in and um, I don't want to look like I'm carrying wine to my girlfriend's house. Um, and so I decided that I would combine a handbag or make a, make a cooler bag that actually looked like a handbag. And that sort of spiralled out of control after that. And um, here we are four, year, four years later with... Uh, 53 products um, and patents in nearly 38 countries. 
So it's been pretty crazy. And how do you sell your products, Suzanne? What, how have you set that up to sell? Do you have a, a retail outlet as well as an online shop? No. Um, we, we've, uh, when I actually came up with this idea, I wanted to uh, stay home, um, not have to interact with anybody. Um, I'd been quite unwell for the, for the previous two years. Um, so my idea was I could do business in my pajamas. Um, I could, you know, talk to the postman uh, through the fence, um, and I really didn't want to have to to deal with anybody. Um, so I I told my family right at the very beginning I am building an e-commerce empire. So I had I had high hopes for, for this product, um, but it was always going to be just online. So I started with an, a WooCommerce website. Um, I sort of researched all the different platforms and I felt WooCommerce was, was well, I was talked into it by programmers that they could manipulate the, the um, uh, platform far better than Shopify. Shopify is very much, you, you buy it, it's all set up for you. It's so easy. Uh, with WooCommerce, there's some, you can do coding, but they, they sort of, they wooed me with the idea that I could have this wonderful website that was completely coded and it was all um, unique and it would be wonderful. Um, so, so we went through about four years with WooCommerce up until I launched a new website at the beginning of December last year. Uh, and long story short, because we're heading to VCAT now, I had to turn that website off on the 6th of February because I'd had no sales because it took 22.7 seconds to load the front page. Um, and if, if you know much about websites, then, you know, two seconds is too long. Um, so we just were losing sales. So I, I had to sit down. Uh, I'd run out of money. I just spent $11,000 on this brand new website that I couldn't use. Um, and I had no choice but to make my own. So um, I created uh, a Shopify store um, in 24 hours um, and replaced the WooCommerce one, turned it off and turned the Shopify on. Um, and it's, it's so much easier. It's really not um, clunky in the back end. It's, it's easy to manipulate in the back end. It's easy to list products. It's easy to... to um, create orders, your discount codes, everything is, they, they've, they've really nailed how you actually work a website. Um, and I absolutely love it. Oh, good. I, really wouldn't, good. I wouldn't ever go back. Beck's wondering why it took so long to load that page. Was it the WooCommerce site or was it something else causing it? Um, what the, the so called programmer had done is all these wonderful features that I wanted for our customer to make it easier for them. Um, she was supposed to code. Um, so coding then obviously, you know, it's, it's a fairly robust system, so it can cope with that. But she added 102 plugins. Now, every time a plugin is loaded, like my, my previous website, I had 46 and it was sort of slower. It was about um, seven seconds and I wanted to improve that and that's why I employed this, this woman to uh, to create us a new website but it was because of the plugins the more plugins you have the more information than the little man inside your computer has to run away and go and get when you're loading your front page and, and it just it was just so horrendously slow okay well I've got a feeling Elise might have a few um, horror stories she can also share um, I suppose I better introduce Elise, I'm trying to unmute her. Uh, for years I've been um, saying uh, it would be lovely to have a mute button for your children and I've just found one because Elise is actually my daughter for those of you that don't know and I'm feeling very much in control tonight. It's the best place I've ever been. So for those of you that don't know Elise, um, she bought her first business when she was 19 and it is actually Fair Dinkum Dog Coats, which she is still running today. She's actually owned another business in between, but she stuck with that very first business. What is interesting about her story is that when she bought it, it was wholesale and uh, she was making things and they were being sold through pet stores um, 
Australia wide. And I still remember when she told me she was going to take that business online and sell direct to the public herself. And she wrote a letter to all her wholesalers right across Australia and said, sorry, not supplying anymore. And it was a huge, brave move. And I was very worried for her, but it actually um, turned out to be a great move. So Elise, just tell us a bit about what you sell and how you sell it through Fair Dinkum Dogs. Um, so Australian made oil skin dog coats, so they're waterproof and, and it's also known as wax cotton. Um, so yeah, been doing that for 13 odd years and, um, and so I've done both sides of the coin, wholesale mass producing and then I went to purely custom making. Um, so dachshunds, whippets, greyhounds, um, anything that people couldn't find a coat to fit. I went and made the coat specifically for those breeds that are a bit tricky. So just recently, um, after being picked up by Facebook, um, Rebecca and I um, were picked up by Facebook gift guide and put through a bit of training. And I turned and, and I also got a, a digital champions grant, um, which um, I, I can see you writing it down, Suzanne. Uh, then it was the first year that they had ran it. it was last year, and they're um, doing um, online uh, questionnaires to to figure out whether they're going to run it again. But um, it was it was so worthwhile, and we were flown to Sydney and Facebook headquarters put through training, and it was there that it, that I was picked up by Facebook inside and met Rebecca in Canberra. So. Um, so that was a bit of a whirlwind, but it made me realise that um, the business was wholesale and then it was, so mass producing um, the one set, uh, set size coats, you know, and then it, I did uh, custom made and it made me bring the two together as my online business. But before that, I had gone through, I think maybe three or four different website platforms over the 13 years. Um, so I knew all about how hard websites can be. Um, and I was the same as you, Suzanne, as soon as, um, I found out Shopify, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier because I had experienced so many different platforms. Um, one thing I keep making the mistake of, and, um, even this week, I'm like, Elise, you're making that same mistake again, is that I get really good. Uh, teams in place like my website team and then my marketing team and then I sort of because I'm still making my product so I sort of take a bit of a back seat and go okay I can just focus on making or, or coming up with new products and I let them handle the website and then ha them handle the marketing and very quickly I think oh get get back on your laptop Elise get you know check on it because I still have to be in the driving seat I can't hand over the you know the steering wheel or whatever it is um, because any time I've done that in the past you've just got to constantly keep check of it and keep working with your teams and um, because they're never going to do anything uh, to, to what you yeah I can see Suzanne going yeah because you've done the same mistakes as me you know they're never as passionate about your product no, you. No. and you are the, the best possible spokesperson for your brand um, and, that, and that's why now I'm not still in my pyjamas and hiding, you know, under a rock. I'm, I'm out because that's what, you know, you need to do to, to run a business. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But it is good to have those teams. I do find that it's good to realise your, um, your weaknesses and your... Because yeah. uh, we, can't, we can't be everything. No, and there's so there's, many things. Oh God, isn't there so many things? You think, oh, <laughs> online, pop it online, and it, you know, it'll run itself. And all you got to, I mean, I thought that's what I thought. I would just, I no. just stand and pick and pack all day and not have to talk to anybody. But it is so different. <laughs> Probably twelve months ago, I realised that yes, you've got to constantly put a bit of effort in, and you've got to, you've got to constantly do a bit. But then it wasn't until um, we were in Canberra. Um, really that I was like oh my gosh putting a website up and then 
just thinking it's going to work itself is like opening a shop and then walking away and going and having a coffee at a coffee shop going, Oh, my shop's open. (laughs) It's just not going to work. You've got to, you've got to work it. Um, and learning all the different ways to do that. And as you've discovered, Suzanne, um, being on video, um, is is a huge one anytime i've posted anything video related it's just and they're talking about facebook lives um i think that's definitely where i need to go you know showing um a a coat getting put on how to um how the waterproof is the coat um i've just started selling australian dog treats so um doing dog training tricks getting you know just constantly on camera um so so yeah, I think that's where the, and they've just introduced, um, obviously there's Facebook lives, but they've introduced Facebook lives with, which is pretty much what we're doing, Zoom meetings. And um, they're really encouraging people to use that. And I think that that, that would be really good. I want to do one with Beck one. Carrie, you're muted. Yep. I, 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 I muted my daughter before I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because I'd really like to talk you, and, you know, Elise has actually just led us down a, a little rabbit hole about, I'm just thinking, the skills you need, it's not just the website platform. And, of course, getting that trust with the right person. Um, I, I remember a story about, you know, if you go to a heart surgeon, they'll tell you you've got a problem with your heart. If you go to a brain surgeon, it's a problem with your brain. So all your um, uh, support people have their preferred areas of expertise and of course they're going to tell you that is going to be your pathway so I can see how you've all been um, you know enticed down these different path pathways and that's something to be aware of. Um, Very so much I, w- I wasted an awful lot of, of money with the next bright shiny thing you know oh I'm gonna your ROI oh I'm gonna do wonderful things and you know you're, you're going to be a million dollar business in a week, you know, and I go, oh, okay, yes, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing that's coming out is about, you know, I'm looking at the beautiful photo of your um, produce behind you and uh, how do you get the skills? Now, Elise is lucky that she's still been, um, she's got a team helping her through the, um, uh, the scholarship she received with the Online Digital Heroes. And they've been helping her, but she does a lot herself too. And I know she's. Been, I'll ask her about Canberra in a moment. But with your professional, you know, you've got a you've got a website. How do you put stuff up on it, Suzanne? What do you? What tools do you use? And how did you teach yourself that? Uh, I've always been very good with um, with technology. So I can. I I taught myself InDesign. I taught myself Photoshop by watching videos on YouTube. Um, I know I know what I want to try and what I want to achieve, so I then go away and try and find out how you actually do it. Um, but since COVID hit, um, and I've had an awful lot of time on my hands because our sales just vaporised overnight. Um, I found Asbas. So yes, Amy's nodding. Um, so I had to bring it up because I never know what it means. It's um, Australian Small Business Advisory Service, and it's a digital solutions program. And I can I can put a, a, a link to it, but it's a one-off payment of fifty-five dollars, and you get unlimited webinars. And I think when it when I when COVID first hit, um, I mean I've done most of them now, but I I will probably be doing. Uh, to a day they were amazing the things that I learned I learned about zoom I learned about Facebook um, shops I learned about um, Instagram I anything anything that was there I would I would I had nothing else to do so you know to sit for two hours so that is a fantastic resource if anybody wants to learn um, I will uh, um, I'll I'll give you the um, link, Kerry, and you can put it in um, when you when you pop this video up. But it's yeah, it's really, um, and, and you just have to you just have to know where your gaps are. Um, so I knew that you know where my gaps were. So you then employ those people. Like I'm a I really I think I'm a dreadful businesswoman because um, I don't I don't look at my numbers. 
and especially if my numbers are not nice then I tend to sort of like well I'm, I'm not, I'm not really <laughs> gonna look at my sales today oh, I'm just gonna merrily go over here and and do what I do I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to look at their sales <laughs> no. now Beck wanted you to repeat that name as was yes yep we will get the link for you Beck ASB ASBAS Okay, um, Elise, tell us about Canva because you were getting very excited on Canva the other day. Uh, yeah, so I use Canva because it's a bit like the Shopify. Do, do you use it, Suzanne? Yeah, yeah. I did a course on it. <laughs> yes, yeah. And have you found the, um, the delete the um, background? There's, there's a button so you can literally custom so I can say, well, I want it to be 2048 uh, 2, square, yes. which is what Shopify likes. And then um, you can just import your, your photo, put it in, and then you can just delete the background. So stark white background like that. Now, that's relatively new. Before then, we had to go to drastic measures of, you know, trying to get the right lighting and having a background and, oh, my gosh. Anyway, um, so I was really, really happy to find that and, and I need to utilise Canva better, but I have used it a little bit um, and, yeah, it's really, really good for that sort of thing. Well, I, I did, I avoided it because I do, I do Photoshop, but I did an ASPAS uh, webinar. Um, it was use Canva like mm. a pro or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, oh, gosh, and the sizing, so you can do one, one like the, the image really? behind me. So easy. Um, you can just go resize, and you and with a click of a button, it will yeah. resize it so it's suitable for Instagram, Facebook, um, website banners. It sort of like does, does it for everything, TikTok or whatever, you know, all the different um, um, yeah. applications. They're fantastic. Really yes, good, yeah. really easy. So the um, the deleting of the background thing is a pro. So you, it's not the free version. You do have to pay for it. But um, yeah, no, it's a great, great device to use. Okay, we got a little bit away from um, actual Shopify. Before we go too far, I'd like to ask you both what do you most love about Shopify and you've both experienced other platforms, what are the features that you like and why? So we'll start with you, Suzanne. It integrates so well with everything. Um, everything's real. like if, if it, if I decided that I wanted to, uh, we've got Afterpay. If I decided I wanted to put on ZipPay, it's just a matter of going to the app store, click, click, click. It's done. It, it steps you through everything. So it really is um, really easy to, to, to use. It really sort of walks you through the steps that you need to actually build your website in the first place. So it is really user friendly. Uh, the, the, um, the support too with Shopify, any other platform that I use, there was next to no support, whereas um, I can be on my laptop at, you know, 10.30 at night chatting to a Shopify person and, yeah, so I, I, that's what I noticed too is that there's either a, a web page that will talk you through how to do something, a video, or you can literally talk to a person through uh, chat box messaging. So, yeah. And that there is um, Shopify University or something. Yeah. So there is a an area where you can just go, there, there's Shopify experts that will answer your questions, there's mm. um, different threads that you can read if it's something that somebody else has had an issue with. So you can always find that. You don't have to pay anybody. And we yeah. have a question from Amy. Can you sell digital products and services or just physical products on Shopify? Services as well, yep. And digital products, yep. Shopify covers everything. They, as far as I am aware, they're the biggest uh, website platform. Uh, they've done, yeah, I think it's called in, in, org, in, to, in uh, basically, I, I forget the, the wording for it. Basically, I say if you sell prams, they are experimenting with, you will hold your mobile phone up, you'll put it to camera and you'll point your camera at the boot of your car 
and it will show the pram that you're thinking of buying in the boot of your car. And they're experimenting with that now. I forget what it's called, but oh, virtual type. Reality? Is that Augment, I can't, yeah, anyway. Oh, yes. Reality, yes. 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 And so you'll be able to point your, your phone at your foot and put a shoe on it and see what you, it looks like on your foot or if it will fit. Um, so they're just so far a, ahead of the game, it's not funny. Great. Um, and I certainly, um, I've been working on a pro forma with a rural shire about how they can sell um, uh, tourism products, so accommodation, um, experiences. And when I was first brought into the team to work on it, uh, they were thinking about building their own platform. They had no idea. And I said, have a look at Shopify um, you know, after having a discussion with the lease, she said, I'm sure, you know, it could be modified for services. They actually took up my suggestion and they love it. They keep saying that was a wonderful suggestion, Kerry, and I made sure I was well paid for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it, it does have some flexibility um, with it, obviously. So that's a bit about Shopify. And if anyone has any specific questions, we're happy to keep answering those. But other tools, it's not just one platform, and we know that different platforms suit different people, but there's also tools. And we mentioned Facebook Shop before, Elise. Why is that on your radar and, um, and, and why are you paying attention to it? Uh, so I'm just going to back it up just a little bit. So what, what's changed with Shopify is the fact that it just connects. So once upon a time, I had my website, then I might advertise on another, another place, like I did do Gumtree for a little while. But, you know, I had to physically do that, put the product in. Whereas now you have all your products on Shopify, you connect it to eBay, um, Amazon, and it's literally maybe a 10, 15 minute process to set it up. Um, in many cases, and there's tutorials on how you set it up. So that one ad goes out to so many sources, um, which is unbelievable. So, um, Mum, what was the question you were talking about before? <laughs> Easily for goldfish. <laughs> uh, Facebook shops, where we've been talking about it, and I, uh, why do you think that's something to pay attention to? So um, Rebecca and I were in Canberra and Facebook mentioned that they were going to um, make it so that you can, you can purchase through a Facebook and Instagram. Um, and they held us to secret, didn't they, Rebecca? They were like, zip it. You know, we're not meant to be telling you this, but it doesn't leave this room. And, and I kept my word and didn't mention it. But I saw that recently that they've launched it in America. Um, and uh, I just read for this, Goldfish Memory. Um, New Zealand, it's either happened, no, today. It was New Zealand today, it's launched. And it is coming to Australia. So basically, there's already Facebook shops. But, uh, sorry, there's already Facebook shop. But this is what Facebook shops that's coming. And it just means that they'll be able to pay. So at the moment, you have your Facebook um, connected to your, your Shopify or, or your other website platform, and you have your little shop there. But when it comes to purchasing and spending the money, it goes through your website, whereas soon they'll just pay at, at Facebook. And they've proven that the le less steps there are for a customer, you, the, the more likely you will end up with a sale. So... That's very exciting news. I, I, I think that's the way they sell it. But mm. one of the webinars that I did um, just pointed out that what, what Facebook is trying to do is keep you on their site. Yeah, so absolutely. Got, there. In, the, in the Facebook shop, you, you head off to somebody's website and you're gone from, from um, Facebook. Mm. Uh, because they did talk about the fact that if you do a video and you put it on YouTube, and then you share the link on Facebook, don't expect to get a good reach. No. So uh, you have to use I, uh, uh, I IGTV. IGTV, thank you, which is the Instagram TV, because it keeps it in the family. And I yeah. think that's what they're trying to do is, uh, well, they, they, they're doing the Facebook rooms now, 
Mm. Uh, they're going to do the shops so that they want to want you to stay and they'll end up being paypal too you know because they're they're doing and they've done zoom they've done the they've copied zoom more or less with the facebook live with yep. so they're looking at all these other platforms and they're doing it their own way mm. yeah it should be interesting it will be okay um before we open it up Suzanne, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to yourself starting <laughs> out again? So there's a young Suzanne in front of you. <laughs> Take me to the shortcut. What, what are the key learnings that you would like everyone to consider today? Uh, there's an awful lot of businesses that make it look awfully easy. Um, and really, I did think... As, as we said, Elise, you just you, you you put your website up, you get your products in, and then you just spend the entire time picking and packing and and you know spending your money. Um, it's not it isn't like that at all. Um, and I was in the corporate world, um, and I was looking at you know I'm I'm 57. I wanted to sort of like maybe sort of retire not retire but sort of like go down to four days a week well I'm that's sort of like completely out of the water so as long as you're happy living and breathing your product um, then I think go for it because it's a fantastic um, I, I, I love doing what I do but you, I think you have to love the product that, that you've got I mean I look at it, I'm just you know I'm all cool clutch um, so you just have you have to put your heart and soul into it if you're going to run your own business. Um, so if you're not prepared to do that, then um, I think you'll sort of struggle. But um, yeah, I I think if I if I if if I said to myself tomorrow I'm going to start my own business, um, I would say be be prepared for a lot of hard work, a lot of heartache, a lot of money, um, but it will be it will be worth it in the end. Elise. Um, to, to my, um, myself, I would say, don't stress about earning a dollar for every hour that you, you, you work, so to speak, you need to put your time into training yourself. I mean, a nurse goes in to university to train, to become a nurse, and they pay lots of money to train to do that. A lot of what we learn is free, but you have to succumb to the fact that you've got to put that training in and learning in. Um, and learn how to work different things. And the other thing is that it's so, um, there's so many ways to do online business. So you've got things such as Facebook ads, you've got Google um, ads, that's an, one way. And at the moment I'm doing that way quite heavily because, because I have funding and it's working really well. But one thing I'm learning from Rebecca is that she really works the uh, groups and the pages. So Australia made um, and Rebecca sells beautiful baby blankets and beanies. And what I've learned through, um, through chatting and net networking with her, we sell a product that's similar because it's for colder weather. Um, it can be a gift based um, and we're doing it. We're doing an online business two totally different ways. And both doing well out of it. Um, Rebecca's got an amazing business. Um, and she really, really works her social media. I, I actually follow what she does a lot. And like, okay, I've got to copy, replicate that in my own way. Um, but there's so many avenues with social media and producing content. And, um, and we just got to continually keep learning and keep innovating and, um, and, for me, it's not feeling guilty about learning, sitting down, spending the time learning rather than actually making the product. Um, and it, I, I mean, that's a daily basis that I, I fight myself on that. You know, you have to put time into educating and, and filming something and, and doing content. I just got a bit distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we never do that to you every time. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Elise. Thank you, Rebecca, Amy, Robin. Um, really good um, chat, and hopefully, we've all learnt something from tonight.